Hey guys, welcome to the ServiceNow world and today we'll see part 21 of ServiceNow developer interview question and answer series. As you know in this series we are discussing about all the theoretical questions which are which were interviewer asked during interview. So without any delay let's see first question. So the first question is what is better alternative to using global business rule? So this, uh, this might be asked like whenever an interview will ask like have you ever worked on business rule? If you say yes, so they will maybe ask like type of business rule and after that they will ask this kind of question like what is better alternative to using uh, global business rule? So you can say script include is the better alternative of using global business rule because global business rules runs all the time whereas in script include function runs only when it is called so basically as you know like business rule are run whenever the record got created or updated or deleted right but in script include what happened like in script whatever the code written whenever we can call this code from the, from some other location maybe some uix on business rule then only it will get executed so that's why we are saying script include will be the better option of using the uh, instead of using global business rule okay so now we are moving to the next question so the next question is what is the use of admin override option in acls so whenever you are creating an acls you have seen like one check check box is there like admin override so what is the use of that so main 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 use of that if you check that option what will happen the ACL will not apply to the admin users. So same I've written here, like when you create an ACL with admin override checked, it means that the ACL will not apply to users with the admin role. Or also we can say that like admin override for an ACL exams, anyone with the admin role from any restriction of that ACL. Okay, so basically simple words we can say, if we override this, if we check that admin override option for that particular ACL, so that ACL will not applicable for all those users who having the admin role. Okay. Now we are moving to the next question. So the next question is what is turn style activity in workflow? Very rare, but very, very rarely we are using in our workflow but common in interview okay so you can say the turn style activity limits how many times a workflow can pass through the same point so basically like we can we can make the we can we can put the limitation like for this activity the that our workflow will pass only this 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 many time okay so like that we can put the limitation using the turn style activity and we use this activity to prevent in infinite loop so let's say like if a complex uh, uh, workflow was there so in that case maybe there are chances like our workflow will when went into the in infinite loop so for preventing that we are using this turn style activity okay so now we have to move to the next question next question is how can you stop form submission on client and server side I can say it's a simple but little bit a tricky okay so you can say in client side simply we have to return false in on submit client script okay so we if you know like uh, for cancelling the form submission we are using the on submit client script uh, there we have to just return false if any other way is there please let me know in the comment box okay and server side we have to use the function that uh, current dot set about action and in the parameter we have to pass the true true so set about action if you pass the true so that will be used for cancelling the form submission in server side if any also in server side any other alternative is there so just let me know in the comment box okay so now move to the next question the next question is what is the use of order field in ui action so if you creating any ui action or you have you seen any existing ui action you may have seen there one kind of order field is there so what is the use of that so it defines the order in which the ui action appears the order applies to the buttons from left to right and to menus actions from top to bottom so it's basically for ordering purpose like in in which position it it will it will get appeared from left to right okay if it's a form button or if it's a like uh, 
if it's in a menu like in a context menu or column context menu so where it will it will get appeared okay so that order we are defining so we just put some numeric value there okay so now we are moving to the next question next question is what do you mean by function name starting with underscore in scripting clone so function names starting with underscore are considered as private function and are not callable from client so this might be you can say one aspect in other way around this question may be asked like uh, what are private function in script include and how, how how we know this this function is private function so that time you can say if any private function if any function starts if function name starts with underscore then it is to be con considered as a private function okay so there are two ways are there for asking the same question okay so now we are moving to the next question yeah so in the last video i have asked the question like what is the difference between actual elapsed time and business elapsed time so actual elapsed values are calculated on a 24 by 7 basis while business elapsed values are calculated calculated based on the schedule specified in the task sla the schedule is taken from the sla definition by default okay so Today's video's question is what are the key benefits of implementing a CMDB in an IT organization? So if you know the answer, please write in the comment box and I'll give the answer in the next video. Till that time, thank you. God bless you all.